All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here, Felix. <clears throat> My name is Daniel Guetta. I'm a senior lecturer at the Columbia Business School. Um, my background <clears throat> is actually in physics, and I was in consulting for a while. I was at Palantir Technologies uh, on the commercial side, uh, not the government side. And then I uh, moved over to Columbia about uh, two years ago. And at Columbia Business School specifically, but also a little at engineering school, I'm uh, uh, very much spearheading a lot of our analytics curriculum. A uh, big part of what we do is teach MBAs how to do analytics. And of course, the first question uh, you might ask is, if my clicker worked, let's see. Let's try it this way. Okay, so as I said, what we do is sort of teach a lot of MBAs analytics, and what I'm going to specifically be talking about today is a tool that I designed to teach machine learning, analytics, data science in Excel. And the first question you might ask, of course, is but why? Why would you want to take topics like machine learning, data science, all that kind of stuff, and move that to Excel? Surely only people who code should really be doing data science, should really be using these tools. And I think from our perspective at Columbia, at least, there's kind of two directions from which you might be asking that question. First of all is why uh, do MBAs even need to know things like data science and analytics? And for me, the answer to that is pretty obvious. Here's an article from McKinsey just from last year talking about this role of an analytics translator, someone who uh, uh, sort of is able to actually work with the technical team, knows enough about the analytics to talk to them, but also knows the business very well. And that's the kind of thing we're training our students to be. And of course, the other question you might ask is, well, if you have to teach them analytics and data science, why don't you just teach them Python? Why don't you just teach them how to code? And there, for me at least, the answer is that I think there's a little bit that's lost if you're trying to teach someone data science and analytics at the same time as teaching them coding. That's a lot to do at once. By doing it in Excel, in this case using Excel Wings, we kind of abstract away a lot of the technicalities and really get to focus on the sort of essence of the, of the problem. Um, as you'll see sort of throughout this talk, Excel Wings was pivotal to making this happen. I couldn't have designed this tool without Excel Wings, and I'm so grateful to, uh, to Felix and indeed the entire team. Um, and so I want to tell you a little bit about, uh, about how, we, how we did that. Just before I start, a little show of hands so I get a feel for the room. How many people code in VBA regularly? Okay, code in Python. How many have used Excel Wings to connect Excel to Python? Okay, fantastic. And how many of you, last question, I promise. How many of you have fit either a random forest or a boosted decision tree? Okay, so few, fewer. And I won't use too much data science and machine learning terminology, but just sort of, you know, to get an idea. So what am I going to talk about? I think just to keep it short, I'll probably stay with the first few, uh, few bullet points. I'll begin with a demo to show you how the tool works. Then I'll tell you how we actually made it happen using Excel Wings, and then maybe we'll get into some uh, technical gotchas. And I think what I have to offer here compared to sort of maybe a more boilerplate use of Excel Wings is I think most of the examples Felix is talking about, and based on our discussions, a lot of the work he's done with Excel Wings is very much bespoke one-to-one -one work, right? You go to a bank, you go to an organization, there's an Excel spreadsheet that does something. For that one user, you convert that to Python, you make that work, then you say goodbye. This is very different. The tool I'm about to show you is something that I give to around 400 students every year, individual students with individual laptops. Some are PCs, some are Macs, some are up to date, some have Python installed, some don't. Some computers are in Chinese, Portuguese, French. There's a lot of environments, right? So this becomes almost a medium scale deployment of an Excel wing spreadsheet as opposed to just sitting on one person's computer. And you know, uh, it took a little bit of coaxing to get Excel wings to work in that sort of uh, scenario, but actually ended up working very well. And so I want to share a few learnings from using Excel Wings in that, in that way. Any questions before we get started? Okay. So let me switch over to uh, the tool. Um, here it is. I came up with a name for it, which is truly horrific, Excel Kit Learn, which is based on Scikit Learn, which is a Python package that you can use to do uh, uh, data science and indeed, of course, Excel Wings. Any suggestions for a better title would be gratefully received. Um, so first of all, let's see how this works. We're going to look at a small example using data from a company called Lending Club that uh, very generously makes their data available online. Lending Club is a peer-to-peer -peer lending company. If I happen to want to fix my roof and I don't have cash to do it, I go on the website, I say, could I please borrow $5,000 from you? The company would say, sure, we'll list your loan. 
then any of you in the room can go to the website. You can see my request for a loan. You can say, oh, I have some money to invest. I'll lend that to Daniel. And Lending Club kind of brokers the loan. Okay, so it's just a peer-to-peer -peer lending company. And this data we have here is every line corresponds to one loan. And you see the loan amount, the term, the person's, how, many, how long the person was employed. There's a bunch of data about the borrower and the loan itself. And then finally, the last column is, did the loan default, right? Zero means it was repaid, it's all good. One means the loan defaulted. And we're gonna fit some machine learning models to try and see uh, how, whether we can predict whether the loan defaults. So the sort of central uh, aspect of this uh, 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 sort of tool is this button here, if I click on it, called Edit Settings. And this is gonna load up a dialog box. This is completely in VBA, using a VBA user form. I'll discuss that in a minute. First thing you do is you select the kind of model you wanna fit. So for now, let's select a boosted decision tree. Again, if you've never seen that, no worries. It's some sort of machine learning AI uh, 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 model we can use. Here we set the parameters of that boosted decision tree. Again, no need to worry about the details too much. And here I set some parameters on how I wanna test the model. So I wanna keep 30% of the data aside for testing. I wanna use something called five-fold cross-validation, again, Never heard those words, don't worry about it. It's a way to make sure that the model sort of uh, 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 is tuned as well as possible, that we're using the right parameters for the model. Then I click on this button and I can select my data. So specifically here, I'm going to select all my loans, that entire table. It turns out this table is actually 25,000 rows. There's a lot of loans that Lending Club gives us. I'm only going to use 1,000 of them because I don't want to stand here for five minutes while the model is fitting with all this data it takes a while to fit, so I'm using a subset just to make it fit uh, fast enough. So now I've kind of set up my model, I've told it what I want to do, and I click Save. Any questions so far? So I've set it up. I've basically told this tool, I have these loans, I know whether they're defaulted or not, fit a model that can predict for a future loan, is it going to be good or is it going to default? Now comes Excel Wings. I click the Run button. And what's going to happen is it's going to launch a Python kernel using Excel Wings. That's what you see over here. And then it's going to go through a number of steps where it actually loads up scikit-learn, loads up NumPy, loads up Pandas, loads up all these libraries that are going to do the machine learning, and goes through what's called cross-validation, this five-fold cross-validation I was telling you about. And right now it's trying all these different models, as I told it to in the first part of the process, figuring out how you, uh, uh, you know, which one of those is going to be best, refitting all the models, and then it is going to hopefully give us an output pretty soon. Now it's fitting the full model, and then we get the output. What do I get as a result? It shows me all the parameters are tested. It outputs a bunch of graphs. Again, if you're not too familiar with data science, this won't make much sense. That's not the main point of this talk. Outputs variable importances, ROC curves. This is a horrific ROC curve, if anyone is familiar with ROC curves. There's clearly something wrong with this model. And now the last part is something that hopefully will blow your minds. I don't know, this took like probably three years of my life to code this next part. It was horrific to code, but the students love it. If you go below this section, you get a section called equivalent Python code. And for people learning how to do data science, this is effectively dynamically generated Python code that tells you exactly the steps you need to do in Python to get exactly the same results as we got in Excel. So the hope here is that students begin in Excel, they get familiar with the context, uh, the concept of a random forest, a booster tree, et cetera, in Excel, and then they eventually graduate to Python, and this tells them exactly what the equivalent code would be in Python. And finally, at the bottom, we get some profiling details, tells us how long it took to run various steps. Okay? Now, to demo just another functionality of the tool, and I could be, I teach a whole semester class on this, so we could be here for a while. I'm not gonna show you every functionality, but this can also do text analytics, for example. So we can use scikit-learn's uh, vectorization functionality for text, to take a uh, text file, in this case, contracttext.txt. This is a file that looks at a number of contracts filed by publicly traded companies, and every line is one contract from one of those companies. I can say I wanna create a bag of words representation with these parameters, press save and run. Once again, this is gonna launch Excel Wings. Excel Wings is going to read that text file, load it into Python, then it's going to vectorize the data, so it's preparing a matrix representation of the data, and then finally, it's gonna output that back to the spreadsheet, and we're gonna get this nice formatted result that tells me, for example, that the word accordance appears 11 times in contract nine, appears 88 times in contract 10, et cetera, et cetera. And just like everything else in this tool, if you scroll to the bottom, you get the Python code you would need to get exactly the same result, okay? 
So in some sense, this has revolutionized the way I teach this class. I now get to teach MBAs, data science and machine learning that is as complicated as I want without teaching them a single line of code. All they need to do is go to this dialogue and they sort of see exactly what, you know, they can specify exactly what they want to fit. Any questions on the demo part? Yes. Have you, guys, have you thought about like doing the same thing from Jupiter? but having like a Jupiter form where you do the same thing that you did with the whole I have thought of doing that, and that was kind of very, uh, and this is something that might be music to, I should be wearing my I Love Excel t-shirt when I, when I answer this question. Part of the reason I didn't do that is at the end of the day, these are MBA students. Still today in 2019, the kind of companies they're gonna go to, Excel is the lingua franca. Excel is the tool they use, they're very familiar with it. They know, they're actually pretty good at Excel, and so I wanted them to be in an environment they're really familiar with. So the nice thing here is they still have everything they're used to. They have pivot tables, they have the Excel if statements, they have they, all that stuff they can still use, and yet in that environment we kind of bring Python to it. I could have done a Jupyter thing, and you know what, if Excel wings didn't exist, that's probably what I would have done, right? Because I wasn't gonna design Excel wings myself, but maybe, maybe I could have tried. But, uh, and another, by the way, big benefit we have out of this, I should point out, Another sort of professor at Columbia initially a long time ago developed uh, an Excel add-in that was based in C. Unfortunately, as many of you here might know, that wouldn't work on a Mac. And a lot of our students have Mac computers. Excel Wings, completely cross-platform. So I can take this and effectively give it to you on a Mac, run it, it'll work exactly the same way, right? Few differences in terms of how VBA user forms work, but uh, I have some bones to pick about that. I'll talk to the Microsoft team later. But, uh, uh, but generally, it'll work pretty nicely on a Mac. Other questions? Okay, so briefly I'm gonna discuss how does this work with Excel Wings. There's a few things when you look at this that if you've used Excel Wings extensively, you might wonder how the hell did he do this? And the specific one, the one that I think should be the most confusing if you're familiar with Excel Wings, is how on earth do I output this beautifully formatted output, right? I mean, Excel Wings doesn't really have, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Felix, there's no functions to say, I wanna create a table, I wanna resize a plot, I want to sort of, you know, have these bold headings, and so on and so forth. So how kind of that, how does that, uh, how does that work specifically? So let's have a look at exactly how the, how the workflow happens here. So the first thing to bear in mind is the initial place where I sort of take my uh, uh, dialog, enter my options, and press save. All that happens in VBA, right? It's probably a very old logo for VBA, but you get the idea. Uh, one of the big benefits of this uh, for the students is that everything that I have inside this dialog ends up being stored in this very ugly string that you see in the Excel. It's that ugly string that you see over here. And one of the big advantages when it comes to the students is reproducibility, right? And not just students, any way you use this. If I give someone this string, this completely characterizes every setting that I have in this dialog. And all that happens in VBA. So that's the first thing to know. The initial stage where I'm doing all my inputs doesn't involve any Excel wing, so it's fast. Uh, you know, it just goes on inside a normal VBA form. Then what happens when I click the run button? That's the part that sort of launches uh, 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 Excel wings. First thing that happens, I take code and I write it from a hidden sheet to a disk, and we'll talk a little more about that. So if you look inside the Excel, little did you know that there's a sheet here which contains all the code that actually runs the add-in. How many lines is it these days? I think it's up to about 3,000 lines if I go to the bottom, so not crazy, but there's still quite a bit of code that actually runs this whole thing. And so the code gets stored in that sheet and then written somewhere temporary in the hard drive. Then I launch Python. Excel Wings is going to read this module that I just wrote to the hard drive. Then it's going to read this formula and then figure out exactly what it needs to do. Does it need to read a table from Excel? Does it need to read a text file from disk? And all of that happens through Excel Wings. So it's now going to pull all that data from Excel. Finally, it sends this to scikit-learn. Scikit-learn does all the math, all the complicated stuff. It updates the Excel to tell the user what's happening. And then, once scikit-learn is done, it has to write it back to the Excel. How does that happen? That happens in two stages. The first stage is you get this output, and I'll have much more to talk about, uh, to tell you about this in a second. I'll show it to you in practice. But this output is a non-formatted output that comes out through Excel wings. And this bit at the top is effectively formatting instructions. And then I have a VBA function that formats the whole thing. So let me show you how that part works. What I'm gonna do now is go into uh, the Excel. I'm gonna go into VBA. Where am I? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable one function. So I'm gonna go to code text. I'm gonna take the format sheet function. You all know this is going to cause this function to sort of uh, cause uh, Excel to bypass this function. 
Let me now run this whole thing again and see what happens. So it's going to launch. It's going to take about 20 seconds again to fit all the, all the data. I found working at a software company, the biggest skill I sort of got out of Palantir is the ability to just talk while something is happening in the background. So this just goes on and on. I'll tell you a joke. I'll maybe tell you about how my day was today while this is loading. So you're not noticing the software is bursting into flames behind me, but it's OK. We'll get there. It's not going to crash. This is also nice. It, it's never crashed on me in class, which is nice. Uh, a testament to the resilience of, uh, of uh, Excel Wings. All right, beautiful. So now it's done, and you'll see it stop because we had that exit sub. It just says preparing output to spreadsheet, and nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Because if I go to my hidden sheets, I now have a sheet four that's hidden. And that sheet effectively just contains this ugly, unformatted output, right, that has everything I want to output and all the plots. But it's kind of this, in this horrible form. And there's all these instructions up here. And now if I go to my format sheet function and I remove the exit sub and actually run it, magically, all this gets formatted. All right. And that's one place that I think maybe I could certainly contribute back to Excel Wings. All of this actually happens through a class called Excel Output. That class has a bunch of functions that you can use to access it. There's an add row, add table, add graph, add graphic. So those are functions I can always do sort of, you know, Excel Output dot add row dot add table. And there's all kinds of objects I can add to it. Internally, this Excel Output class is going to hold an out vector, a formatting data, and a graph formatting data. So it's going to be three sort of uh, uh, lists it holds inside the uh, uh, class. And then there's this output to spreadsheet method that automatically outputs everything with all the right formatting information. And then the VBA function does the formatting. The benefit of this is I never really have to worry about this horrible sort of piece of code at the top of the spreadsheet. That's completely opaque. I wrote the class and I forgot about it. So this all happens automatically uh, you know, behind the scenes. I don't need to code it up myself in some sense. Um, beautiful. And that in some sense is how uh, this works. And then the last thing maybe I'll do, and I'll do it very quickly and happy to talk about any of these issues a little more offline. Uh, but any questions before I get to that last? Yes. yes so uh, would it be nice to have for Excel wings to use like maybe an add-in that sort of does what you do and does the formatting. Uh, are they looking at that? Uh, is Excel Wings looking at putting the... Yeah, take, making some companion add-in you can use to do formatting. You seem to be saying that Wings doesn't do formatting, right? Uh, we could talk to Felix, but I mean in some sense, I, in some sense I... Sorry? We don't currently look at it. Right. In some sense I have it. I mean this is something you and I should talk about, Felix. It's kind of ready to be contributed back to the code base if that's something that fits in Excel Wings. I don't know. In some sense it's also a little bit outside the remit of Excel Wings perhaps, I would imagine. I mean what Excel Wings is great at doing is just that interaction. As I said, this application I think is slightly outside maybe the main, and I say this as a hypothesis. I'm not sure, but it might be slightly outside what you know, uh, Excel Wings has been used for thus far. But you know, we can certainly talk more about that. Uh, offline. And in fact, what I'll do now is talk a little bit about other things that I found have been problematic as I've designed this and how I fix them. And again, these all stem from the fact that Excel Wings is just not designed to be used like I used it, just to give out to all these students. Um, and you know, I've had about 500, oh, there's one last thing I need to show you that you're going to love. Um, I totally forgot about this. So you notice when you go to the add-in, at the bottom here, I had to put in my email address to run it. And there's all this little sort of small print text. Turns out what this is, and this is something I use to see how the students are using this, every time you run this add-in, it actually pings a server of mine and adds a line to effectively this table. And so you can see sort of all the, uh, uh, every time it runs effectively, it kind of logs a line on this table. And as a result of this, since I introduced this feature in the add-in this summer, I can do something like select count star from auth logs, and I can find out that since the middle of the summer, it's been run 7,769 times, right? And this is really nice because it also lets me profile the kind of errors people are getting. Every time Excel Wings returns an error, Python returns an error, my add-in returns an error, logs it to the server, I know exactly what students are struggling with. You know, it's kind of uh, been pretty useful in terms of figuring out how to quash bugs in my code. To be clear, this feature can be turned off. I'm not trying to steal anyone's data. I'm not trying to spy on people. It's just been useful for now. And frankly, once this uh, 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 add-in is stable, I, you know, I'm probably not going to do this anymore. This is really just for the intermediate stage as students are struggling with it. It's also useful when they email me and say, sort of, you know, I have an issue with the add-in. What happened? You know, 99% of the time, they don't include their file. They don't give me a screenshot of the error. They just assume, you know, I ran it and it crashed. Most useful kind of thing they could tell you. Here, at least, I can see exactly what caused it to crash. 
Anyway, a few other things that I learned. First, interestingly enough, running run Python from a user dialog, from a user form in VBA, crashes everything, apparently. That's why I have the user form and then a separate run button. Not quite sure why, but that's the solution I came up with. Yes, the, the sort of uh, to run Excel wings from a user form sometimes crashes Excel. It's, very, uh, it's a very race condition. It uh, only happens sometimes. Um, in fact, I may have a Stack Overflow question on it that is sitting lonely right now. Uh, but I changed that by just having a separate, separate run button. Second, this is my biggest problem, was my biggest problem, enormous, which is the following. As all of you know, if you use Excel Wings, there's the package in Python, and then there is the VBA code that sits inside Excel. The sort of canonical way that Excel Wings uses that VBA code is through a reference. So in VBA, there can be a reference to this VBA file sitting somewhere. I found that was untenable when it came to actually sharing that file with other people. They may have Python in a different environment, a different language, different folder structure. It just wasn't going to work. So instead, I included the VBA file, the VBA code for Excel Wings, in my Excel file. So if you look at my VBA code, there is this module called, where is it, called Excel Wings. That is the Excel Wings code. Okay, that's included inside the file. Here's the problem. If the package Excel Wings that they have in their Python distro is different to the one I used to generate that file, sometimes it breaks, right? Because, you know, the VBA code expects one thing, the Python expects another thing, and you end up with these errors that typically are not very, uh, I say ungracefully, maybe this isn't too kind, but the error doesn't say your versions don't match. It says something like, you know, use excelwings.caller, there's, there's other errors that are triggered from version incompatibilities. And the second uh, version of this problem is issues finding Python. In Windows, Excel ring relies on your path variable, right? It tries to run Python, it expects Windows to recognize that command. Unfortunately, when you install Anaconda, to include Python in the path is a notoriously uh, error-prone operation. It even tells you, if you try and install Anaconda and you check the box that says includes Python in the path, It'll tell you, warning, please don't do this. This is a terrible idea, right? I kind of solve both these problems uh, by doing something that works really, really nicely. I effectively create my own packaged Python distribution using ConduPack. It's a package that comes out with Anaconda. And effectively, I tell students, here is a 500 megabyte zip file. Unzip it, put it on your C drive. That file acts as a parallel version of Python on their machine, even if they already have Python installed. I effectively distribute my own version of Python, and then I point Excel Wings to load from that version of Python. And using that, I've had zero errors, right? Out of maybe 100 students who've used it so far. So in some sense, I have my own distributed little environment. They get two files from me, a zip file and Excel file, and that's it. Here's another, uh, let's see. Oh, this is another one just including the code in the sheets. That makes sense. Um, uh, OK, this is another fun one. Uh, this is, uh, I'm looking at you, Microsoft people. For some bizarre reason, if you store an Excel file in a OneDrive folder and you run this workbook.fullname in VBA, the result you get is not the actual path of the file on your drive, it's this ridiculous link, httpd.docs.live.net. And so when someone tries to run Excel Wing on a file like that, they click it, Excel Wings tries to look for d.docs.live.net, it's like, where the hell is this file? The whole thing dies, right? You get this kind of error. So my solution to that, funnily enough, I haven't found any way in Excel to actually find the path of those files when they're inside a OneDrive folder. So I just basically warn the user and I say, stop using OneDrive. Um, I don't say that. I just tell them, move it out of that folder. That's another issue. Uh, this is my favorite one. This is amazing. About one in maybe 100 users who use this add-in, one in 100 times the add-in is used for some bizarre reason. The way Excel Wing, uh, uh, the bizarre thing is the bug, not what Excel Wings does. Excel Wings very sensibly logs Python errors by taking any errors raised by Python and logging them to a file, a log file. Here's the problem. About one in 100 times, that log file gets a uh, permissions uh, lock in Windows, right? Windows thinks it's being used by another program for some reason, and it's not used, and that leads to a super insidious error. What happens? The file doesn't get deleted by Excel Wings, and then the next time you run Excel Wings, it tries to write an error to that log file. It fails silently because the file is locked, and then you get a pop-up in Excel Wings that gives you the error from the last time you ran the add-in. And this is horrific, right? Because you keep on changing your code and you think you're going insane, right? You, ran, you run a blank file in Excel Wings and it gives you an error saying, you know, error in line 25. And you're like, what is going on? It's because last time you ran it, there was an error on line 25. So my solution to this, I've kind of hacked uh, Excel Wings to add a random number to the name of the log file. So every time it runs a new time, it's a different log file, and so you don't encounter this error. 
What else do I have? Oh god, this is a fun one as well. Uh, if you lock sheets in your spreadsheet, sometimes Excel remembers that once they were locked and Excel wings won't function, don't lock sheets for editing if you're going to use Excel wings. Uh, this is another fun one, trying to access Anaconda environments. I love the fact that Excel wings included the ability to access Anaconda environments. Doesn't quite handle every possible kind of environment you might use, so I kind of fixed that too. Uh, this is a really fun one. Yeah, this is the last one, then I'll stop. Um, um, I, said, I guess I said all of them are fun ones. I, I have too many favorites, okay. Um, okay, here's a simple piece of Excel Wings code. All it does is I click on here, I type any text, press OK, and it's gonna put that text in that cell. Groundbreaking, right? That works. Here's a really weird one. I'm gonna go into that dialog, and let me use the magnifier so you can really see what I'm typing here. I'm going to type the following string, T-R-U-E, and like in this weird sort of uppercase, lowercase thing, it doesn't matter how I type it, as long as the word is true, and I press OK, somewhere inside the code, I'm not sure where, it gets cast as a Boolean. And now this is actually a number, this is not a string, so I can do true plus one, it gives me a two, and I can't tell why or where this is happening. I looked everywhere. I don't know if it's Excel that does it. I don't know if it's Python that does it. I don't know if it's NumPy, if it's Excel Wings. Somewhere that gets cast to a number, and that can cause pretty uh, 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 sort of bad bugs in the sense if you have a big pandas table, you try to output that pandas table, if one of the cells contains the word true, that becomes a number, and that can cause all kinds of issues. So I haven't quite figured out how to fix this one. I need to, uh, I still need to look at it. Anyway, there's a bunch more, but just to give you an idea, these are the kind of things that came up when you use this on sort of hundreds of users. It only happens one or 2% of the time. Unfortunately, when you get it used seven, 8,000 times, one to 2%, you know, is a, is a big deal, especially when students scream at you uh, when, it, uh, when it doesn't work. Uh, but the overarching message here, I think, is how grateful I am to the Excel Wing team. This completely revolutionized the way we get to teach uh, uh, machine learning, data science uh, at Columbia, and I have interest from a bunch of other schools who want to use this, uh, this tool. My next steps is obviously fixing some bugs, hopefully uh, uh, integrating other kinds of models in there. You can probably fit neural nets with this. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts, love to discuss it, and thank you so much for, uh, for listening.